So I can either learn yeah. by failing and having to learn from my own experience, or I could just pay. Mm-hmm. You know, you just did that. You'd probably spend a bunch of money to sit, sit down with Grant Cardone. Something clicked with me there too. We talk about yeah. clicks. I'm sitting in the event. No, I'm sitting in lunch and Cardone's on stage in the Diamond Lounge. And he's like, hey, you know, we're doing this $50,000 two-day mastermind and I'm going to give everything away. All the secrets. The team's going to be there. There's only going to be like 15, 20 people in the room. And I'm be like, I'm like, I'm sitting there and I, I look at my wife and I'm like, I'm mad at myself that I don't feel like I'm ready to do that yet. I'm like, it, it, it kind of ticked me off, mm-hmm. you know? And she's like, we'll figure it out. So I did it. And it yeah. was and like, I can't, like all the stuff I learned that I've already shared and that we like keep, you know, it's like, it's incredible. You yeah. Know? Well, it's exposure is what it is. You just get exposed to a different frequency of thinking. Yeah. And a lot of people just don't think... It, I mean, everything is a cycle. There's a cycle of poverty. There's a cycle of abuse. There's a cycle of, mm-hmm. of success. I mean, look at how many professional athletes have children who are professional athletes. Yes. I mean, it's just exposure. And so you, if you're not where you want to be, you got to break that cycle. Mm. That's, that, that's, that's the only way that this works. And so if you're looking in the insurance business for someone who's going to break the cycle, it ain't going to happen. It's just not. There's nobody... There's nobody leading the way. I mean, you guys are you guys are, I believe, one of the pioneers in getting people to think differently. But you gotta look outside of of this little tiny industry. I love, the, I love that you say that because people are always like, dude, what why do you need to go outside the industry? Or why are you having these out these these external industry guys speaking at eight percent and that kind of stuff? It's like cause Because we're tired of hearing people talking about recruiting and recruiting yeah. and recruiting and yeah. layer after layer after layer and then not releasing agents and then ripping them off and selling them crappy leads. And ninety two percent felling. And but that's been the industry for decades and yeah. no one has said enough is enough. That's right. No one's broken that cycle. It's when people left the industry and said, look how the mortgage industry is doing things. Look how the car industry is doing things. Like, why not take the good from other places and infuse them into a multiple billion dollar industry? That's right. Then when, we, then when you do that, now all of a sudden things happen. Mm-hmm. Look at the industry now. It's much different today than it was five years ago and totally different than 10 years ago. Yeah. Totally different. Because people are thinking different. It's not the same old guys that have been in this thing for 50 years telling us the same thing over and over again. Everyone wants to hold on to all these little secrets and they think they know everything. You know, like when I, when I started doing Facebook leads several years ago, people were literally, I would have people emailing me, please stop telling people what you're doing. <laughs> I believe because it. Because we're using it also. It's working well and we don't want anybody else to know. Sure. And I'm like, that just sounds so small minded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And now there's, you know, 4,200 oh Facebook lead vendors. But it's like, dude, who, you know, who cares, right? It's just, it's, I love that you're saying that. It's true. Wow. It's good. I'm blown away. Yeah. I mean, so you guys both read 10X. Yeah. So what was the biggest thing you took away from 10X, Jonathan? That connections. You don't, well, you know what? Don't judge a book by its cover. And I'm not going to go into too much detail. But, uh, but you just never know who you're meeting and what they can do for you. Um, and I, I just met some people who, who, if any of us would have met some of these people, we would have been like, I'm not going to really spend much time talking to this person. They're, they're a, not really a, a big deal, and you just, you just don't know. And it's happened to me numerous times in my life. But, but at 10x specifically, there was some, some deals that I was able to, to accomplish, some, some sales that I was able to close. That if I was in public, I would have looked at this person and been like, ah, I'm not going to talk to that person. That person's just seems kind of weird or they seem sketchy or they don't seem successful in there. I'm like, wow, this person really is legit. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that, that, that was my biggest takeaway. It wasn't something that actually happened in the conference, but it was something that happened f- from other people who, who attended the conference. But it was just crazy, man. I mean, Floyd Medwe- Mayweather was there and they asked him what's his most expensive watch. And he said $18 million. They said, well, why would you spend $18 million on a watch? He said, well, when you got this much money, who cares? Yeah. You know, and then John Travolta owns three planes. He said, well, why do you own three planes? He said, because if one breaks, I got another plane for backup. Like, this dude owns three planes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Uh, he just thinks so different, man. It's freaking <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. So uh, so the two things I would say is definitely don't don't ever judge a book by its cover because mm. I think Grant Cardone says this, but he always says, you know, who got my money? Other people really do have what you want. Not in the sense that you're trying to take what they have, but other people are going to get you to where you need to be. And uh, so don't ever judge somebody because some people who you don't think are successful are probably way more successful than you. Wow. And then the second thing is, is don't just don't think small. You know, Cody, yeah. you spent $50,000 to sit with Grant Cardone. Probably the best thing you ever did. Yeah, it was. I, I left now and I'm like, 
I can't imagine not doing that. Like I would be so upset. And yeah, I made a huge mistake while I was at 10 X. Cause you text me one night, you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm here with like some X growth con speakers and we're all like hanging <laughs> out and, and I didn't go. And that was a mistake. Dude, you should have came. You I should've totally came. should have. The, the later that night, I looked at Lauren. There's these moments in life, and I'm like, Lauren, <laughs> right now, I made a huge mistake. I should have went and freaking hung out with Jonathan and, and Tim Story and Carrie Kasem and all these other people. Like, her person owns LA Style Magazine, like, et cetera. It was like, it was crazy. And yeah. I'm like, dang it. That was a mistake. And you know what's wild about it is uh, it's, it's Chris, who is in charge of marketing now, just had his 30th birthday that same weekend as, as 10X. Yeah. And we didn't party and we didn't drink and we didn't do anything. And he looked at me and we got back to the room. He's like, dude, this is the best birthday I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, but I think a lot of people make that mistake. I struggle. I don't know if I've ever said this. I struggle mostly with knowing I should do something or knowing that. TikTok is going to be big, but being stubborn about stuff, you know, for a random weird example. If I struggle with that, I know a lot of other people do too. And that's why it's like, okay, just write the check. Just go, you know, show up and network. And I still struggle with, with you know, actually taking action and doing stuff. And most people wouldn't think that, but I really do. Well, and the comfortable thing is to sit in your bubble because you're the king of your bubble. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like you can sit there and I can be yeah. the king and I can do my thing. But it's only whenever I get around people like you guys and just that and partner with Cody and all these monsters where I'm like, oh, my gosh, like it's just a different wavelength that we're operating on. Getting out of that comfort zone is huge, obviously. You know? They drop some bombs at 10X, too, because you're yeah. the, the, that's a huge takeaway. You said don't judge a book by its cover. I heard countless times I'm not going to 10X because the speaker lineup. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't yeah. look like what I want to do. and. There's never been a conference in the history of the world <laughs> that dropped that many celebrities and powerful people and speakers in the three-day span. Yeah. It's never happened. Yeah. Dana White was, was probably one of my favorites. I don't know about who, who your favorite was. Scooter Braun surprised me, Scooter, but Dana Scooter White was, was cool. I didn't realize two, they bought it for $2 million bucks and sold it for $4 billion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I thought that story was so phenomenal about how – he convinced the Fertitta brothers to partner up and buy it. And then yeah. out of them just believing in Dana White, they were like, hey, we're just going to give you 10% of this company. Like, we just believe in you. You yes. put no money up, but we're just going to give you 10% of this company. They turn around and sell it for $4.5 billion, which is to, if anybody watches the TV show, um, it was Entourage. The, you know, Ari Gold, who's the agent, who's crazy. and yes. So that guy in real life bought the UFC for $4.5 billion. And the story was he literally put everything on the line. Like they said, he liquidated everything that he had. Everybody thought it was nuts. Everybody was like, dude, you're an idiot. It's 4.5 billion. It's not going to get any bigger. It's the UFC. Like it's not even a, like it's not basketball or the NFL. You know, what are you doing? And he literally sold, they said everything, everything that this man had bought it for $4.5 billion. And they said today it's worth uh, just over $9 billion. And that's like in just like four or five years. Yeah. And for (laughs) someone like Dana White to not put any money up and go from, no investment to four hundred. He was a bell boy. Yeah, he was a bellboy at a hotel when they bought the UFC. I think that's the biggest takeaway from. I think out of all the conferences I've been to, I remember Ed Milet saying one time, "This would have been this was the ten uh, X before this last one." Yeah, he says, um, "People don't have to believe what you're saying; they have to believe that you believe what you're saying." Mm. Yeah, and I think of stories like that. You know. With Dana White, like I'm not sure if, if if they believed him, but they surely believed that he believed what he was saying. Yep. And you, when you look at things like that in life, I, even even this presidential, this last presidential election, um, where Hillary was was going up against Donald Trump, no one believed what Donald Trump was saying. Like no nobody did, but everyone believed that he believed what he was saying. Yeah. And they didn't believe that about Hillary. They're like, well, we know she's lying. Even the people that liked her were like, I don't know, she may be, you know. But but that's a, that's the biggest takeaway. That's good. I think that's good in sales too is like you have to have such a deep conviction that even if people are apprehensive, they're like, but dang, that dude really believes it. Like, let's just let's just do a deal. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that stuff just comes – that's the only nugget I took away from 10X2. Wow. Um I took a lot, but that was the, that was the one that like has really stuck with me. Ed Milet saying that that's powerful. It, it, it changed it changed my entire perspective. So I don't know what we spent. I mean, with airfare, hotel, and the ticket, maybe it was 
five to seven because I didn't get a really good ticket like Cody does. Um, I think I spent like that, but that was worth way more than seven thousand oh, yeah, dollars just for, for sure. that conference. You know what I'm saying? We talk about uh, well, Jordan Belford, obviously speaking at eight percent, and he talks about certainty all the time, and I totally agree with that. Like, if you are more certain about the ability that whatever product or service is going to do than the other person is that it's not going to, they're probably going to do it. Well, isn't that what sales is? Just a transfer of conviction? That's a transfer it. of beliefs? Like you didn't know you wanted this before you talked to me. Now I have to transfer my conviction into you and now you want to do business with me. That's exactly right. So. That's exactly right. Man. Goodness gracious. You got any other questions while we... Uh... Dude, all I do, I'm like, this is, I just had like a little moment um, internally listening to you speak. I'm like, okay. I remember four years ago watching videos on YouTube of you giving a tour, maybe it was Tony, giving a tour of North Star. Oh, yeah. The previous space before you you know, sure. bought an additional 100,000 square feet or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm watching the, the, the what I thought was big at the time that's now small. And I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, it, it would be incredible to to meet those guys, you know, to, to, to get to go tour that place, you know, and have people like that as a part of my network, you know. Sure. Um, and then we've got a, um, a big carrier. I don't know if it's okay to say or not, but a huge carrier coming in today. Um, the largest privately held insurance company in the world. They're, they're coming here today as well while you guys are here. Um, and I just, I, I am thinking back over the last four years and it's like everything I've done is, is worth it. And, you know, um, you guys are talking about going from, you know, 34 to five, half, half a billion. It's like, Dude, people need just, just to start. Like, that was the big thing. The biggest thing I took away from Grant Cardone's two-day mastermind. In the first hour, he spent the first hour talking about an ideal life mm-hmm. and how years ago he crafted what he viewed as his ideal life. And his ideal life did in, involved flying around the world on a jet. Mm-hmm. His ideal life involved having $20 billion worth of real estate one day. His ideal life did not involve getting his own coffee. You know, his ideal life involved having a, a massive conference and a massive team. And he's just like, everyone needs to figure out what their ideal life looks like. Yeah. Dude, and I think a big thing for you is your ideal lo- life looks like a, a final expense telesales company that is that is bigger than anything else everybody's ever seen. Probably doing hundreds of millions a year. And, you know, you're able to, as Monero says, eventually be the magician, you know, yeah. like everybody has this, I, like I know for him, his ideal life is for, you know, security and marketing be doing a hundred million one day. And dude, I believe it's going to happen. You know, uh, I just know that everyone needs to be thinking about, okay, what does my life look like in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? If you're Jonathan, 40 years, you know, cause you're freaking young <laughs> yeah. and I'm getting jealous. I'm t- almost 30, you know, I'm like, dang, uh, I think everybody needs to start thinking not what I want my exit to be, but what I want my ideal life to be. And then, and then, and then begin to formulate a a um, a path to that. Yes. Like not a business strategy, but like a life strategy. You yes. know, I, that's that's what we did. I mean, we really knew what did we want our life to look like in ten years. Like, mm-hmm. and that's what we went in. And we're not even at the ten year mark yet, but we're <laughs> like everything that we do is all geared towards. This is what I promised. This is what I promised my wife. Like, this is what I promised it was going to look like. Yeah. So every decision that we make, we're going to point it towards that thing right there. Mm. Which, which if you talk about successful people, very few of them talk about money. Like, they just understand that money is the byproduct of that. That's right. But this, I want the biggest conference. Not the most profitable conference, but yes. the biggest conference. And I want this and that. And then the money is just a byproduct of what I want that to look like in the future. Hey, if you love this podcast and you want to know how an agent went from homeless to six figures per month, then click on that video right there. You'll love it. And I'll see you there. Here's really what they're saying. I'm scared of the unknown. And if you can do it, I think maybe I can do it. But here's what happened. They would never do it. Everyone who said that to me would never do it. Why? Because they thought I'd know.